Hey guys, I'm heading into the city, but I uh, just noticed on the tracker, one of the mystery C-32s is coming into Andrews Air Force Base, just over here by one of these runways. And if I can get under it, we might be able to film this mystery plane. Oh, there it is. It's on my right. It's behind this building. It's an all white C-32 without many markings on it. And it's run by a kind of a secret unit of the US Air Force. There it is. Okay, so that plane is cool, all right? There are only two of those aircraft in the U.S. Air Force inventory. One is with the 486 Test Flight Squadron out of uh, Elgin, uh, Florida, down there. The other is with the 150th Special Operations Squadron out of New Jersey. I think that one was from New Jersey, but I can't be sure because I didn't get the whole track. Now, the users of that are special forces, either the U.S. military special forces, the State Department's emergency support team, or the intelligence community, which occasionally uses those planes. Why is it here? No idea. All right. Have I seen it before? Yeah, it comes in and out of Andrews uh, kind of regularly. I've just never been able to catch it uh, when I was driving by. But yeah, it's not totally unheard of to visit Andrews. But if you ever see one of these two C-32s, uh, trust me, the plane spotters, this is like, this is like finding uh, a very unique aircraft. Anyway, pretty cool thing. Let's go get something to eat. Hey guys, back in the big city. Yeah, we're back in Washington, back up at the National Cathedral. I'm on a bike. We're going to go for a ride just downtown, see what's new. Been away for a few days. Oh, I did come back yesterday. <laughs> anyway, not much going on in Washington today, but hey, who knows? We'll maybe find something. So the first order of business is to get rid of this red bike, replace it with a black electric bike. But the nearest black electric bike is down here, just past the Russian embassy, which is pretty quiet. The war in Ukraine is still going on. There's some Ukrainian flags over there. And the grass here has been replaced with sunflowers. Yeah, basically these are all sunflowers growing here across from the Russian embassy now. But uh, the number of protesters has diminished considerably. And now you just have the signs, but uh, no people on the streets anymore, really. Okay, we're on a big black bike now. Increases our range x full. Whoa, pretty purple flowers. And now the white ones. Ah! <laughs> Maybe we'll make it through the trees. Anyway, we're gonna spin down through Georgetown and make our way downtown, see what's going on. But like I said, it's a pretty quiet day in Washington. Kind of a July 5th hangover kind of day. Mm. The street is always fun to walk down because Rockland's vents all their barbecue smoke right on to Wisconsin Avenue, and I'm right downwind of, of a wood fire right now covered with barbecue sauce. Anyway, we're not gonna eat Rocklands right now. We're gonna go, we're gonna go downtown. Maybe get something else, we'll see. So down here, there's been a bunch of uh, climate deal signs that have popped up. These are all over Capitol Hill and up in this neighborhood getting climate done. And then they've got uh, Joe and his aviators and Schumer and Nancy Pelosi, fighter pilot. I don't know. Anyway, they're calling for a climate thing. Yesterday, about a dozen environmental activists got arrested on the Beltway. They sat down on the Beltway yesterday, blocking traffic, for about 90 minutes. Now, the trucker protest, the 1776 Restoration Movement, they just did slow rolling. They didn't actually, like, really tie up anything for more than 20 or 30 minutes. But these 14 uh, climate activists, they really screwed things up and they're all in jail or got arrested and released. So a lot of people asked, did the, uh, did the truckers get much publicity? Well, no, because uh, in part because the other people got arrested and caused even a bigger traffic jam. And then of course the situation in Chicago was 
pretty much the main story in the news. Hey, did you guys see that? I almost got hit by that car. That was kind of cool. Anyway, let's uh, keep going into Georgetown. That's the Dumberton Oaks Library. Next up little museum. I should go in there one day. I had a ticket once and I just sort of fell asleep on it. That yellow house over there, that was Abe Fortas' house, Justice Fortas. Fortas. He was uh, nominated to be the Chief Justice under Nixon, but that kind of got uh, nixed. That was kind of a recess appointment that didn't go through. But he did serve as a regular justice. Now let's go down this street. Where are we at? Oh, Q Street. Lots of bumps up ahead. Oof. Busy. Road needs repairs. Now this big house on the left, that one there with the big tower, the big towering cupola, that's uh, Bob Woodward's house, the investigative reporter of the Washington Post who helped break the Watergate story with Carl Bernstein. So Woodward and Bernstein, that's where Woodward lives. Now, he didn't live there when he was a young reporter. He lived in a cheap apartment. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. So we're down here in Georgetown. These are typical Georgetown row houses. These are all well over a million dollars each if you want to live in Georgetown. I think the cheapest you could live in Georgetown is about a million bucks. Most of them are go up to five or something. This building is 14 million. This giant complex, the Colonial Apartments. Uh, I've shown you that a few times before. Hey, we just mentioned um, Woodward of the Washington Post, but I also wanted to mention this is Ben Bradley's house. Ben Bradley, who was the editor-in-chief of the Washington Post, he lived right over here on the left uh, during that time. And that was right across from the house that Jackie Kennedy lived when she was a widow. The first house she moved back into in Georgetown was right over there. Uh, but then the press found her and she was hounded and they basically she left that house. But that was right after the president died. All right, let's just keep going down to the waterfront. Okay, okay, I know a lot of you'd like me to show you this house, so we're gonna swing over on this slight detour down this street. I think this is Olive Street, yeah. And this little yellow house down here at the end is your favorite house. This house was uh, occupied by a young typist with a uh, typist stenographer for the OSS, the or Office of Strategic Services, the precursor to the CIA. And she went on to marry a guy named Childs and eventually became known as Julia Child. Julia Child, the chef, television star, author, all that. She lived right there in that yellow house when she was a young clerk typist for the CIA. The house was recently renovated and put on the market. I think it sold for about $3 million. Uh, if you go on uh, like Realtor.com or Zillow or some of the other real estate websites, you might still find a listing for it. They, they basically gutted the entire place and uh, did a massive renovation. It looked quite nice. Not worth three million dollars, nice, but but nice nonetheless. So we'll cut through here. This is George Washington University Medical Center. GW's hospital is right there, and I believe the med school and library is right over here. The kids eating over there and stuff. There's a the subway right over there. Down here, there's a couple chess hustlers, and yeah, they're playing chess for money. I need to bring my kids out here play some bullet chess. <laughs> Probably about the 80th fight they've ever had this week. <laughs> cars from the West Executive are back because the construction project continues. There's actually no fence right now. I mean, there's this wooden fence, but the big black fence is gone, getting replaced. With the new 14-foot improved deluxe fence with the pointy bits at the top. Uh, Secret Service out here. Some guys fixing a flat tire. 
the guy who's always protesting I don't know what these people are protesting or some religious people probably scads of tourists pretty normal day in front of the White House flags at half staff at the White House must be for Chicago or Highland Park and a bicycle team out there pretty mellow day let's uh, just continue down Pennsylvania Avenue and see what else we can find maybe even a hot dog Oof. let's go out here I don't know what they're doing they're ever gonna fix this area up this has been locked up for so long Not that big of a crowd down here. In fact, most of them are in the other direction. Let's see what's up on the south lawn. It looks like they've cleaned up the, pic the mess from yesterday. Not really a mess, just a lot of uh, billboards and stuff. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Photo lobby people. They still got some bunting up on the patio. Any signs of the 4th of July party that were here last night? Eh, let's go down in the mall. Maybe there's still some uh, fireworks. Maybe there's like some unexploded fireworks we can find to play with. <laughs> that would be cool, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, I don't know this guy. Hey, how's it going? Hot dog and Diet Pepsi. Ah. Thank you. Got a big one today. Mm. Ketchup on my soda. So I'll be down here tomorrow morning because Marine One is heading out. Uh, Joe Biden will be flying off to, I think it's Cleveland, Ohio, to talk probably about some economic thing or probably wrench in the Highland Park shooting as well. The VP is coming back tonight late. I don't know, like 8.30, 9 o'clock or something like that coming back from Chicago. They're in Chicago for an unrelated matter, but they might might address the Highland Park controversy. I don't know if they'll go up to Highland Park. It's a little early for the politicians to be visiting. Boy, it's a gray sky today, isn't it? No, he's not. Yeah, I did just hear thunder while I was eating my hot dog, but uh, it hasn't started yet. The flag's already at half staff around the monument, all 50 of them. I wonder what happens if DC becomes the state. Are they going to like reposition all 50 flagpoles to make 51 flagpoles equally distant apart? Or will they just add like a different flagpole somewhere else? I don't know. I don't think we're going to find out anything. All right, let's cut over here by the Willard Hotel. You guys have heard a lot about the Willard Hotel if you're following the January 6 hearings. This is where their command room was set up, supposedly. The Willard Hotel, though, also was in the movie uh, Captain America Winter Soldier. There was a scene where a, a Hydra agent was thrown off the roof of a hotel, and that was ostensibly the Willard. The exterior shots were shot here, but then part of it was on the soundstage, probably in California. The Willard Hotel is also where the last-ditch effort to stop the Civil War was hammered out. Didn't work, yeah, the Peace Convention. The old Willard Hotel, the last major effort to restore the Union and prevent the Civil War. Virginia's invitation delegates from 21 of the then 24 states arrived here in a secret session on February 4th to 27th, 1861 to try to solve the problems. And as we all know from our history books, that peace conference was unsuccessful. Say la vie. Say la vie. Okay, let's... Uh, Let's continue on our bike ride. Sorry. So right over there, guys, that's FBI headquarters, the J. Edgar Hoover building. Though, I think in the next, like, 30 days, we're going to get an announcement about the future of FBI headquarters. Uh, it looks like it's going to be moving out to the suburbs. They need a bigger building. They need a more modern building. This building's a piece of crap. It's falling apart. So we expect... Expect to hear that shortly. Maryland and Virginia both want FBI and all the jobs that go with it to be brought to their towns. It's still open. People coming in and out. Cars coming in and out as the day comes to an end. Let's cross over. 
Well, let's get out in front. Across the street there is the Department of Justice, and over there is the IRS, Internal Revenue Service. That's just their headquarters, though. Your tax, your tax returns are not in this building. Your tax returns are processed in local, I'm just going to go this way, local regional offices. Ah, we've come up on a wolf pack. So they're Yankee cars right here. There's a couple more tow trucks up ahead. They want this road empty. Now they really have not been enforcing parking, well, since COVID. It's only been the last couple months that they've decided to crack down on uh, parking. But uh, crack down they have started. This guy's gone. Someone from Florida. Didn't read the signs. My car. Well, now we get an extra lane of traffic. That's the advantage of towing. Yeah, he's pulling out. That's the siren. So that's the thing in DC. Four to six o'clock is rush hour. You gotta watch out where you park. <laughs> I haven't had to stand on a subway in a long time. But I have to now. We have transition from subway to scooter. We are actually using a scooter for what it was intended. Last mile transportation. The last mile home from public transportation, you take a scooter or a bike. So this white building over here, most recently a CVS, but before that, it was a Chinese restaurant known as Yenching Palace. And Yenching Palace is actually quite famous in Washington, D.C. lore. You see, at Yenching Palace, the Cuban Missile Crisis was solved. Here's a photo of Yenching Palace back in its heyday. And what happened was representatives of Russia and representatives of Kennedy met here in 1962 during the Cuban Missile Crisis. And they had a series of meetings in which an agreement was reached on how to disengage from the Cuban Missile Crisis. And that was solved over Chinese food right up here in Cleveland Park, Northwest Washington, D.C. So guys, that's Tuesday, July 5th hangover day in Washington. Pretty mellow. Anyway, we'll be back tomorrow making another video, lots of helicopters and, well, whatever else we can find. Hopefully a little bit more exciting than today. Thanks a lot for watching though. Subscribe if you haven't and I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.